So yes guys, let's start question number 18. On 1st Jan 2011, Investment Limited, a new company raised a first capital of 3 lakhs from issue of 30,000 shares of 10 rupees each at par. And on that day, he acquired the following holdings. A Limited, he purchased 3,000 shares of 10 rupees each for 35,000. For B Limited, 10,000 shares of 10 rupees each at 72,000. C Limited, 8,000 shares of 10 rupees each at 92,000. Apart from these transactions, <coughs> those detail and those detail below, Investment Limited never paid nor received any monies during 2011. The following is a summarized balance sheet for a subsidiary at the end of 2011, 31st December 2011. There's a goodwill already existing, freehold property, plant stock, cash and bank, plant sorry, profit and loss account, share capital, reserve, PNL, and creditors. Other relevant information given to you. The freehold property of C Limited is revalued at 65,000 on 1st Jan 2011. 1st Jan 2011 is the date of acquisition on which you have revalued the freehold property. Additional depreciation for the year 2011 of 3,000 rupees per plant of B Limited is to be provided. Stock of A Limited as on 31st December 2011 has been undervalued by 2,000 and is to be adjusted. As on 31st December, Investment Limited owed A Limited 3,500, is owed 6,000 by C, B Limited and C Limited owed 1,000 rupees by A Limited and 2,000 by B Limited. All these are your intercompany owings. The balance of the PNL as on 31st December 2010, that is the last year closing balances of PNL A 2000, B 12,000, debit and C 4,000. The credit balance of A and C were wholly distributed as dividends in the month of March 2011. That is during the current year, they have declared the dividend for 2010. During 2011, A Limited and C Limited declared and paid interim dividend of 8% and 10% respectively. Dividends no per annum. So it's 8%, 10% straight. You are required to prepare a consolidated balance sheet of Investment Limited and its subsidiaries as on 31st December 2011. Ignoring taxation. Now guys, if you observe, the balance sheets which are given to you, A, B and C, all those three are subsidiaries. The holding company is basically the investment limited, which is talking about in the first line. Investment limited, a new company has raised capital of 3 lakhs, 30,000 rupees, 30,000 shares of 10 rupees each. And on that day, he acquired the following. And he is acquiring in A, B and C. One more indicator for this is the last line. You are required to prepare a consolidated balance sheet of investment limited, not for A limited or B limited or C limited. So investment limited is a holding company and it has three subsidiaries A, B and C. All the three subsidiaries were acquired on the same day that is 1st Jan 2011. So we have to consolidate with three. Now if you observe, there is a reserve as on 1st Jan 2011 which is already existing. There is no addition to any reserve here. So whatever reserve is there, entire reserve will be taken as pre-acquisition because 1st Jan 2011 is the date of acquisition. So what we have to analyze is only the PNL. And when you are analyzing the PNL, the first adjustment is freehold property. Guys, for C Limited, there is a freehold property which is being revalued. Freehold property means it is not, not a depreciable asset. So it's not a depreciable asset. So you get a revaluation reserve for C Limited. That is the first adjustment. There is no adjustment for PNL of C Limited. Second one, additional depreciation of 3000 rupees for B Limited. So B Limited's PNL should reduce by 3000. In the same way, B Limited's plant also should reduce by 3000. Stock of A Limited is undervalued. So that means I have to adjust even the PNL of A as well. Now, so three adjustments: one for C Limited, next one for B Limited, next one for A Limited. So one adjustment for each company in the group. So let's start. But before we start, the first thing that we need is for me to consolidate, I need to first identify what is the balance sheet of Investment Limited. So unless and until I know the balance sheet of Investment Limited, I can't consolidate it with the subsidies. In all the previous questions, wherever we have seen, Investment Limited or the holding company's balance sheet was already given to you. Here the holding company balance sheet itself is missing. How can you consolidate? So for me to consolidate, first let's prepare Investment Limited standalone balance sheet. So how does it actually look like? So let's start preparing that and then we can identify. So let's go for a standalone balance sheet. Standalone balance sheet you don't have to form, you know, 
use a schedule 3 or something it's just a working note prepare a plain investment limited balance sheet balance sheet of investment limited as on 31st December 2011 year ending check what is the information available for you the first capital is 3 lakhs from issue of 30,000 shares of 10 rupees each now there is the first value I can take equity share capital is 3 lakhs yes I will get a cash of 3 lakhs but not now because the cash is already utilized for purchase of investments investment in A limited purchase for 35,000 B limited purchase for 72,000 and C limited purchase for 92,000 so on the asset side investment in A, B and C 35,000, 72,000 and 92,000 A limited number of shares are 3,000 B limited number of shares are 10,000 And C limited number of shares are 8000. Now what else information is given for us as on 31st December 2011. He had 3 lakhs cash. He utilized it for purchase of investments. But things do not stop there. Because all this transaction happened on 1st Jan. During the year he additionally got some values. If you observe come down to point number 4. Point number 4 he says that. On 31st December 2011, Investment Limited owed A Limited, he owed A Limited 3500. That means A Limited on the liability side as a creditor $3,500 in the same way and E is owed by B Limited 6000 so on the asset side for debtors B limited 6000 I have two more things to consider now I don't have to continue reading point number C anymore because the remaining intercompany owings are C and A and C and B so C and A and C and B will not impact your investment limited balance sheet at all it's already included in your C limited and A limited and B limited balance sheets. So come down to point number 5. There are some P&L balances which he has given for A limited 2000, B limited 12000 negative and C limited 4000. Going down below in the point number 6 he says whatever A and C limited have credit balances that is wholly distributed as dividend in March. So that means I am talking about this 2000 and 4000 which is existing as a credit balance in A and C. So p and of A is 2000 credit, p and of C is 4000 credit which is completely distributed as dividend. Which year dividend? 2010 dividend. 2010 dividend as far as investment limited is concerned, if you observe they are acquiring the holding. Investment limited purchased in A limited and C limited now. So when did he acquire? 1st Jan. When is the dividend being paid? March 2011. That means after 3 months. So definitely investment limited will receive a portion of the dividend and such dividend whatever we take we have to consider it as pre-acquisition dividend. So pre-acquisition dividend should always cancel from your cost of investment. No problem we have already taken the investment let us take it to p &L. we can adjust it in your reserves for CBS later. No problem regarding that. So this is the first adjustment to dividend. Second adjustment point number seven. A limited and C limited declared and paid interim dividends of 8% and 10% respectively. So again interim dividends of A and C. A and C are, hold, are held by 
Investment Limited again. So whatever dividend is being paid by ANC will be received by Investment Limited. So there are two dividends. One 2010 dividend. Second one 2011 interim dividend. Let's put it to PNL. Though there is a portion of pre-acquisition dividend, I'll adjust it from cost of, of cost of investment in your cost of control. So let's check the PNL guys. PNL of Investment Limited. Is profits only comprise of dividends? So I need to write a PNL here. After calculating this, I can write my cash balance as balancing view. Let's try to put up the PNL. There's no opening balance because the company has just been formed on first year. So there cannot be any opening balances. So what we'll have is only 2010 dividend. Dividend for 2010 received from ANC and in the same way I'll also have interim dividend for 2011. Interim dividend from 2011 also received from both A as well as C. Now let's check. How much dividend did A Limited pay 2000 in 2010? Because whatever credit balance is there in the PNL, the entire credit balance is paid as dividends. So what is the credit balance of PNL in A? A had 2000, C has 4000. So 4000. I cannot consider the entire dividend to be received by investment limit. Because if you observe, how many shares are there in A Limited? A limited share capital is 40,000. If each share is 10 rupees, that means the number of shares are 4,000. How much did investment limited acquire in A limited? 3,000. So how much percentage? 75%. When he owns 75%, he will receive 75% of dividend. In the same way, check C limited. C limited share capital is 1 lakh. That means 10,000 shares. Investment limited purchased 8,000 shares. That means 80%. What about interim dividends? Interim dividends are given as percentages. 8% and 10% of the paid up values. You can calculate directly. How many shares in A limited? 3,000 shares. Each share being 10 rupees. And the dividend that he has paid is 8%. Similarly for C limited. 8,000 shares acquired, each one having 10%, 10 rupees and 10% dividend. So let's start calculating the dividends now. For 2010 dividend, this is 1,500 from A, 3,200 from C. Interim dividends, 30,000 into 8 is 2,400. This is 8,000. Strike a total. We'll get the PNL. Fifteen Yes guys, I know during the year there is no expenditure which is given to us, so I did not consider. So there is no point because he did not give that information in the question. Let us not try to complicate some things. So we need to get the cash balance now as a balancing figure of balance sheet because the balance sheet normally tallies. Once you have all the figures, obviously your cash should be the balancing figure. Well, instead of taking it as balancing figure, you can also take it. From a cash flow statement, prepare an entire cash flow statement or a cash account, you will get back your cash answer.
1,13,600 is your balance of cash. Yes guys, from here you can start solving your normal problem. We start with your date of acquisition, cost of control and go on. So let's start with your date of acquisition. First Jan 2011. Shareholding pattern Number of shares held and percentage holding Solid for three companies First one in A-Limited A-Limited Investment Limited holds 3000 shares so minority should hold something to make the total number of shares as a limited as 4000 shares that means minority holds 1000 shares holding is 7525 then check for B limited Investment Limited holds 10,000 shares in B Limited. Minority should hold something. Check the total number of shares. B Limited share capital is 1,20,000. That means there are 12,000 shares in B Limited. 2,000 held by minority. I can't get a percentage here. So I'll take it as 5 by 6 and 1 by 6. Should be 83.3333 and 16.6777. So you can round it off, put it to 100%. Fractions sound much better. So go for C Limited now. Investment Limited holds in C Limited 8000 shares. Minority also holds a portion. Total number of shares in C Limited are. 10,000, 1 lakh share capital it is, so 10,000 shares, 2,000 held by minority and the share holding pattern is 80-20. So this is the entire holding that we have. You can start going for your analysis of reserves. Analysis of reserves of subsidiary with respect to date of acquisition 1 1 2011. Let's check for A limited first. Check the balance sheet. A limited reserves, one reserve which is there on 1-1-2011 that is anyways pre. So what we have to analyze is only the PNL. How much is the amount of PNL? PNL he has a balance of 6000. This 6000 is after declaring and paying interim dividend from the balance sheet of 8% which is already given. During 2011 A limited has declared an interim dividend of 8%. That means already that transaction is completed. So my PNL balance of 6000 is after the interim dividend. So the 6000 balance whatever is existing, let's try to analyze it. Because the opening figure of 2000 whatever he has given in your point number 5, it has been already declared as dividend then. So let's check how it looks for A-Limited. It's actually simple guys but still try to maintain it so that you'll have some doubts cleared. 
ए लिमिटेड पी एंड एल बैलेंस ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट डिसंबर टू इन द बैलेंस शीट चोस सिक्स थाउजेंड Out of this six thousand, I'm saying balance as on one one two thousand eleven was two thousand. Check your point number five. But this two thousand whatever was given in point number five in number six, he says this credit balance was wholly distributed as dividend. So less. proposed dividend for 2010 entire 2000 so what is the profit left on zero so what is the 6000 then the 6000 is completely current year profit after interim dividend Check any adjustment given for eliminated balance sheet. Eliminated P and L. Point number three. Stock of eliminated as on 31st December 2011 has been undervalued by 2000. Has been undervalued. Is to be undervalued. That means you need to undervalue now. Has been undervalued. That means it's already undervalued and given in the balance sheet. So you need to increase it by 2000 rupees. Stock increases. Profit also increases. so my stock adjustment 2000 rupees increase 8000 rupees the entire 8000 should be treated as post acquisition there is no pre pre acquisition became zero already Let's go for the second subsidiary, B Limited. Best part about P B Limited is there is no dividends. He is a negative negative P and L guy. Check the P and L. B Limited's P and L as on 31st December 2011 is 18,000. So pick up from there. Balance as on 31st December 2011. Negative eighteen thousand. From the negative eighteen thousand, again split two parts. Balance as on date of acquisition one one two thousand eleven. Point number five. B limited debit balance was twelve thousand. Negative twelve. So that means my current year profit is negative six. Adjustments. Point number two. Additional depreciation during the year three two thousand eleven of three thousand is to be provided. Additional depreciation in the sense extra depreciation you need to provide. When I am providing excess depreciation, what happens to the profit? Reduces even more. So my additional depreciation three thousand twelve thousand and nine thousand twenty one thousand that additional depreciation of three thousand and provided eighteen minus three is twenty one again. Finally, for C Limited, balance as on thirty first December two thousand eleven. Balance sheet date, P and L balance is fifteen. That's after interim dividend. Interim dividend is already declared and paid. Positive fifteen.
balance as on 1st Jan 2011. Point number 5. Balance of C limited reserve was 4000. Entirely distributed as dividends. Two thousand ten proposed dividend it is so balance will be zero. So entire fifteen thousand can be considered as current year profit. After interim dividends. Check the adjustment to the profit. Interim dividend is already reduced. You don't have to reduce again. <clears throat> Check. Any adjustment? Point number one. Freehold premises of C Limited is revalued to 65,000. Guys, freehold premises revaluation. Will it affect the PL? Nothing because it is a non depreciable asset. So, non depreciable asset, I will not have additional depreciation on upward revaluation. So, I don't have anything here. I can directly take this 15,000 as post acquisition. There's no pre acquisition from here. That is all we can do for the analysis. From now you can happily go for the distribution tables. I need totally three distributions for A limited, B limited and C limited separately. There is a reserve which is already given in the balance sheet as 1-1-2011 which will be taken completely as pre-acquisition. So post-acquisition only one column p &L, that's it. Distribution of reserves. Pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. Post-acquisition maintain a p &L column. Let's go with A limited first. First pick up the p &L. Pre-acquisition 0. Post acquisition 8000. Check your reserve, balance sheet reserves. For A limited it is 3000. Entire 3000 will be taken as pre acquisition. There is no post. Strike totals 3000 and 8000 to be distributed between Investment A limited holds seventy five percent minority twenty five percent two two five zero and seven fifty six thousand and two thousand. Quick on your calculations guys, 75, 25, you don't, you don't need calculators man, try to use your head. B limited, only PNL guys, there is no reserve for him, PNL itself is negative, what reserve will accumulate? So minus 12,000 is pre-acquisition, minus 9,000 is post-acquisition, that's it. Distributed between investment limited and minority interest. Investment 5 by 6. Minority 1 by 6. So this should be 10,000 and 2,000. This is 7,500 and 1,500. Finally, let's go for C limited distribution. Pick up from the analysis of PNL. Pre zero, post fifteen. Nine 
Then check your reserves from the balance sheet. Balance sheet reserves, see limited, 7,500. Entirely pre, because it was existing on 1st Jan. There is no accumulation or appropriation in the current year. Now let's start distributing this. Investment and minority. Check your shareholding pattern again. C limited. 80-20. So this is 6,000 and 1,500. This is 12,000 and 3,000. With that, we come to the end of the distribution tables. Yes guys, once we are done with this, we can go for cost of control. I need three cost of controls now. Investment in limited in A limited, investment limited in B limited, investment limited in C limited. In A, in B and in C. So go on, first start with cost of investment. Check the balance sheet. 3572 and 92. Less pre-acquisition dividend. No effort necessary to identify this figure guys. We have already calculated it. Check your P&L of investment limited. Your dividend of 2010 whatever we received is pre-acquisition dividend. So A limited 1500, C limited 3200. Pre-acquisition dividend guys we include it in P&L. We need to reduce it in reserves for CBS. Guys, someone who would like to directly adjust it against cost of investment in the balance sheet itself, you can do it. Instead of taking these figures at cost of investment, you can do it cost of investment minus pre-acquisition reserve and this will not appear in your reserves for CBS, sorry, your P&L of investment limited anymore. Compare this with share in net assets. Split between share capital and reserve.
share capital. Share capital is how much share capital does he hold? In A limited, 3,000 share, 30,000. In B limited, 10,000 shares, so 1 lakh. In C limited, 8,000 shares, 80,000. Pre-acquisition reserves, guys, B limited, everything is negative. Yeah, now you can take. Pre-acquisition reserves, A limited, 2250, B limited, minus 10, C limited, 6. 2250, minus 10,000, positive 6,000. There is 32 to 50, 90,000, 86,000. Check goodwill. I think net you will get a capital reserve, I guess. But in the first case, I have a goodwill of 1250, negative capital reserve of 18,000. And then here you have 2800 capital reserve. Sorry, goodwill. Two goodwills for A and C, one capital reserve for B. You can strike a net of it. You get a capital reserve in total. So it should be 14,950. 13,950. This 13,950 is capital reserve. 13,950 is the amount of capital reserve. I got a capital reserve of 13,950. One figure which we need. That is sufficient guys. Cost of control. Then you can go for the next working note. That should be your minority interest. Leave the balance sheet of investment limited here. Because you need it for the purpose of consolidation. So only eliminate the remaining. Minority interest, three minorities in A, in B, in C. Minority share in net assets indicated by share capital and their reserves. Under reserves, pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. Share capital in A limited. In A limited minority holds 1000 shares. 10,000 share capital. In B limited minority holds 2000 shares. 20,000 share capital. In C limited again minority holds 2000 shares. 20,000 share capital. Guys, one second, we skip the revaluation reserve of C limited. In the analysis of C limited, kindly make this small adjustment, guys. We get a revaluation reserve extra for C limited.
Revaluation reserve. Revaluation is 65,000. Freehold property in C Limited is 50. So revaluation is 15,000 upward. It was revalued on the date of acquisition. So entire thing should be taken as pre-acquisition. Now you can distribute between investment and minority. Investment takes 80%. And minority takes 20%. Investment 18,000 and 4,500. Post acquisition will remain same 12,000 and 3,000. So one more small adjustment should come here. In your cost of control. In the cost of control for C limited column, make the necessary adjustments. Pre acquisition reserve earlier we have taken it as 6000, but now it is 18,000, which will give me a total of 98,000 for share in net assets. Comparing with your cost of investment, I have a capital reserve again of 9200. And my final capital reserve will increase then. In total when I take my total capital reserve. I have a goodwill for 1250 in A. Two capital reserves. So 27200 minus 1250 is 25950. You've completely... Forgot this revaluation reserve to be considered, guys. So 25,950 is your capital reserve. Now, when pick up your reserves for your minority interest, minority in A, 750 and 2000. Minority in B, everything is negative, minus 2000 and minus 1500. Minority in C, positive 4500 and 3000. Now I can strike totals. 12750, 2700. Positives, guys. And just add up the figures. 56,750 this is. Total of minority is 56,750. Investment limited consolidated balance reserve. When you find out there's only one PL column, take that 15,100 and start solving. Reserves for CBS only the PL column. Starting with investment limited balances. Balance and investment limited balance sheet is 15,100. Share in post acquisition reserves. Of A, B and C. Post acquisition reserves 6000 positive, 7500 negative, 12000 positive. 6000 negative 7500 positive 12. 
other than that we have taken the pre acquisition reserve to pnl so sorry pre acquisition dividend to pnl so pre acquisition dividend wrongly credited to pnl we could have adjusted this guys when we are preparing the balance sheet itself doesn't make any difference you adjust it or you don't adjust it again you get the same answer because we are adjusting it here I have two pre acquisition dividend from A as well as in C. From A 1500 rupees deduct. From C 3200 rupees deduct. That's it. There is no other adjustment given there. Zero nine zero. Nine double zero. 2090 is your reserves for CBS and after that you can go for your consolidated balance sheet of investment limited of investment limited guys when you are cancelling your intercompany owings you need to be careful with your point number 4 all those are intercompany owings 3500 6000 9500 1000 and 2000, 3000 again. So total 12,500 is your intercompany owings. Total 12,500 being in your intercompany owings, you need to deduct it both on your asset side as well as your liability side. Asset side reduce it from debtors and liability side reduce it from your creditors. 12,500 rupees. Share capital investment limited three lakhs reserves and surplus I 
I think I have a capital reserve as well. First, take a capital reserve of 25,950. And I have a reserve, PNL, reserves for CBS, 2,900. Then I'll get a minority interest. Fifty-six-seven-fifty. Non-current liabilities are nil. There's nothing which look like. So let's put in our current liabilities. Do not forget to reduce twelve thousand five hundred rupees from creditors. Liabilities, creditors, total your creditors. 5,000, 11,000 and 4,000 that is 20. Absolutely wrong. Because we have a creditor even in investment limited which should be added 3,500. So total 23,500 minus intercompany owings given in point number 4. 3,500 plus 6,000 plus 1,000 plus 2,000 12,500. So 12,500 deducted from this. 23,500, so current liabilities and creditors. You need to start with investment limited guys. Investment limited creditor is 3,500 plus creditors of subsidiaries is 20,000. So total 23,500, deduct 12,500, you get a creditor of 11. That's it on the liability side. Come to your assets. Non-current assets. Tangible fixed assets. There's a revaluation for freehold property. Freehold property should be taken as 65,000 for C limited. Remaining things being the same. So it should be 59. Yep, 59 plus 65. 59 lakhs plus 65 is 124. Second asset is plant. Take your plant. 16 plus 30 plus 12. There's nothing in investment limited anyways. So 16 plus 30 plus 12 is 58. 58 minus point number 3. Sorry point number 2. Additional depreciation from plant is 3000 rupees. So deduct 3000 rupees from that. So the total will become only 55,000. Intangible assets, goodwill, already existing in the balance sheet, 19. Then I have three stock, debtors and bank balance which are my current assets. Stock, total your stock, 64,000 stock. There's nothing as for a stock in your investment limited. So this total is 64. 64 minus, sorry, plus 2000 rupees. Because stock of A limited was undervalued by 2000. So we have to take the stock as 66,000. Debtors reduce it by intercompany owings 12,500. Do not forget that. 
datas total of your datas is 4000 8000 plus 17000 this total is 29000 for datas minus 12500 1600 for datas oh one second i have to add even 6000 investment limited datas of 6000 so 22500 Datas the 6000 plus these datas of the subsidiary 4000, 8000, 12000, 12000 plus 17 is 39 plus 6, 45 minus 12500, 2500. I think it's 30 to 5. Bank is 1,21,800. Is 20 to 500 correct? 1,28,000. Bank balance, the 1,13,600 plus 1,000 plus 2,000 plus 11,500. That total is 14500. 14500 added to this 128100. And strike a balance sheet total there. Balance sheet total is 414600. Yes guys, there could be a question saying that why not this capital reserve and this goodwill be cancelled? It's not possible guys. Because the capital reserve which we got is as per AS21. This goodwill, I don't know what standard it is. Because it is already appearing in a standalone balance sheet, so it should be either as per AS26 or it should be either as per AS14 amalgamation. So I can't cancel AS9, AS14 goodwill with AS21 capital reserve, not possible. Because they are arising because of two different standards. I can't cancel them. I can cancel it here when we are finding out your cost of control because everything is as per the same accounting standard. If it is with the, as per the same accounting standards, you can nullify your goodwill and capital reserve. Here I can't. Here I can't do that. So let's go for the next one, 19. In the 18th one, the balance sheet itself is not given. In the 19th, the balance sheet will be given without the acquisition entry. Abel made an offer to acquire all the shares of Baker at a price of 25 rupees per share to be satisfied by issue of 5 shares in Abel for every 4 shares of Baker. At the date of expiring of the offer, which was the 1st Jan 2012, that is his date of acquisition shareholders, Owning 75% of shares in Baker accepted the offer and the acquisition was effective on that date. So, Abel acquired in Baker 75% on 1st January 2012. How did he acquire? He acquired it from the shareholders by exchanging his shares of 5 shares for every 4 shares held. The accounting date for Baker Limited is 31st March 2000, sorry, 31st March every year. But to confirm with Abel Limited, Accounts were prepared up to 30th June covering 15 months. Normally they should have ended it on 31st March. But to confirm with the holding company they have extended it by 3 more months. And they are putting it as 30th June. 
So instead of having a 12 months balance, uh, you know, financial statement, I'll have 15 month financial statements. That is for the subsidiary baker. Summarized balance sheets as on 30th June for both the companies are given to you, which do not include any entry regarding your acquisition of shares by Abel and Baker. So that acquisition entry is eliminated. That you need to calculate how many shares to be issued and how the accounting should happen. All that headache is ours. So if you want to confirm, check Able Limited's investments on the on the asset side. I just have quoted investments at cost. I don't have investments in Baker at all. So that means the acquisition entry was never passed. So we need to pass the acquisition entry as far as your Able Limited is concerned. How many reserves are there? One general reserve and a PNL. That is for holding. Subsidiary has only PNL. Subsidiary has only PNL. Baker Limited 20,000. Come to the draft PNL as on 30th June. Guys, financial statements for Able is 12 months. But for the subsidiary, they have extended it by 3 more months. So the financial statements are prepared for 15 months. Baker's 15 months financial statements, so 15 months PNL. Balance brought forward, profit during the year, taxation during the year, interim dividend during the year, and the balance carried forward is 20,000. That same 20,000 carry forward balance, you can observe it in your balance sheet above. In the balance sheet above, your PNL is exactly 20,000 in Baker Limited. The directors of ABLE recommended a final dividend of 20% to the shareholders on the register as on 30th June. The directors of Baker also proposed a final dividend of 12.5% payable on 30th September 2012. Guys, if the dividend of a subsidiary is payable out of post acquisition profits, you don't have to adjust. That we have already seen. But if you observe here, though he is declaring the dividend at the end of the year on 30th September 2012, it is 12.5% payable. So it will be payable for how many months during the financial year? There is no per annum basis here. So for how many years? Financial year in the sense 15 months. That means I am dating it back from 1st April 2011 but check my date of acquisition my date of acquisition itself is 1st Jan 2012 that means there is a portion of post acquisition as well as pre acquisition in this so we need to compulsorily give the dividend adjustment for the subsidiary so prepare the balance sheet of Abel and Baker consolidated as on 30th June 2012 so let's start first identify the PC First, identify the purchase consideration what Abel has to give it to Baker. To compute the PC, check the statement. First two paras, Able Limited made an offer to acquire all the shares of Baker at a price of 25 rupees per share. That means 25 rupees per share is the price that he is quoting per share in Baker. So Baker's each share is 25, but he is not paying the 25 by cash. He is paying the 25 by allotting him 5 shares in Able for every 4 shares in Baker. So there is some share value for his own shares that is able limited that he set up which we don't know and we don't have to identify also we can go forward straight forward for this so how many shares are taken up 75 percent how many shares were there so put an adding computation of purchase consideration the consideration paid on purchase of shares in baker
नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स इन बेकर लिमिटेड चेक नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स बेकर 60,000 इज अ शेयर कैपिटल ईच शेयर ऑफ टेन रुपीज सो वॉट इज वॉट ही हैज इज सिक्स थाउजेंड और नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स इन बेकर एक्वायर्ड बाई एबल Seventy-five percent, six thousand shares. Seventy-five percent of it, four thousand five hundred. Seventy-five percent, six thousand shares. 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 Value per share in Baker is twenty-five. So my purchase consideration is four thousand five hundred shares into twenty-five rupees, one lakh twelve thousand five hundred. How is he discharging this PC? He is issuing five shares for every four shares. I'm not paying this one lakh twelve thousand five hundred in cash. So I'm giving you an exchange ratio. Five is to four. How many shares did he buy? Four thousand five hundred. So number of shares to be issued by Abel. Calculate 4,500 shares. 5 by 4. 5 six to 5. 5 six to 5 shares of value 1 lakh 12,500 are issued. If you have to record a journal entry, we'll record it like this. Investment in shares of Baker Limited account debit to equity share capital is one lakh twelve thousand five hundred. Equity share capital is five six two five zero, and to securities premium same value I guess. It should be the balancing figure actually. But we'll round up with the same 56 to 50 figure. So this is the entry that he eliminated from being recorded. Now we have the journal entry to be recorded. We don't have to record and prepare the balance sheet again. We'll directly incorporate the values. So I'll get a securities premium additional reserve. My share capital should increase by 56 to 50, and my cost of investment should be taken as 1 lakh 12,000 pound. One date of acquisition. Share holding pattern and straightforward. Date of acquisition is first January two thousand
Able Limited and Minority. Able Limited acquired 7,500 shares out of 6,000. 4,500 shares out of 6,000. 4,500 held by Able. 1,500 by Minority. Total shares are 6,000. Shareholding pattern is 75-25. Go ahead, go ahead guys and we can go for analysis of reserves. Be a bit careful, there's a proposed dividend towards the end. Not much of adjustments guys, not much of adjustments at all. After the balance sheet you don't have so many figures. Baker Limited's p and is 20,000. We normally start with that in your analysis. Be careful guys because the PNL is drafted for 15 months. Balance as on 30th June 2012 is 20,000. This is given to us. Split. 
balance was on 1st April 2011, 15 months back, it was 12. Yep. No dividend adjustment for the previous period, but for the current period, that is for 15 months, I made a profit of 18, I paid a tax of 6. So the profit was actually 12, but out of which they paid an interim dividend of 4000, paid on 30th November, date of acquisition is 1st Jan. So you won't get that amount of profit at all. So current year profits after interim dividend guys, this is, is 8000. 8,000 is a simple figure that we have identified. 20,000 minus 12,000 or you can check from here. 6,000 paid as tax and 4,000 paid as dividend out of 18,000 profits. 8,000 is the balance. But there is a final dividend to be paid. 12.5% of final dividend. 12.5% of final dividend to be paid on the entire share capital of 60,000. Check the payment. How much do we pay? Proposed dividend. Sixty thousand share capital multiplied by twelve and a half percent. I think this is seven thousand five hundred. Yep. Profit remaining is five hundred. I don't divide and deduct. I first deduct and then divide because proposed dividend is for full period, current year complete period. Now I have to divide. How do I divide? Based on 1st Jan 2012. Now basically when I am talking about this current year profits of 15 months this is up to 30th June. From the date of acquisition up to 30th June post acquisition period is 6. Pre acquisition period obviously should be 9 months. So divide it. up to 1st Jan 2012 from 1st Jan 2012 to 30th June 2012 calculate one part other one will be the balancing figure 500 into 9 by 12 or 9 by 15 right now this is 300 this is 200 200 will be taken as post acquisition. This 12,000 plus this 3,000 total 12,300 to be taken as pre acquisition. I don't need a separate distribution table, guys, because there's only one reserve. Only one reserve existing, divide of year only. Pre acquisition two parts, post acquisition two parts. Able and minority, able and minority. Sharoling button is seventy five twenty five. Two twenty five and seventy five, one fifty and fifty. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's 12,300, right? So this is 4075. 3075. 3075 and 9225. Unnecessary, guys, distribution table. Go for the cost of control. Single column. Cost of investments. I purchase it for one lakh twelve thousand five hundred.
where is the pre acquisition dividend then not the interim dividend guys because the interim dividend is paid in for in november 2011 i acquired on jan 2012 so able limited will not get that dividend but able limited will get this dividend 7500 he is proposing now out of this 75% will be received by able is the entire 75 pre acquisition no because the 75 the 7500 is paid for 15 months for me 9 months is pre acquisition out of 15 months into 9 by 15 that will give me a pre acquisition dividend of Pre acquisition dividend is three three seven five. So this is one lakh nine thousand one twenty five. Share capital he holds four thousand five hundred shares. Share capital is forty five thousand ten rupee share. Pre acquisition reserve is nine two two five. Able limited share. So this is fifty four two twenty five. So finally, I'll be lining up with the goodwill figure. Fifty-four thousand nine hundred. Fifty-four thousand nine hundred. Fifty-four thousand nine Yes, guys. What about the next one? Minority. Their share in share capital. They loaned fifteen hundred shares, fifteen thousand share capital. 
their share in the reserves. Pre-acquisition, post-acquisition. Their share in pre-acquisition reserve is 3075. Their share in post-acquisition reserve is 50. Do not forget their share in proposed dividend at all. Because we have to pay them dividend, their share of proposed dividend has to be received. 7500 is the total dividend. They hold 25% of it. So this is 1875. So this total is 20,000. Reserves for CBS maintain a PL column sufficient. You will have a reserve as well as where well as ABLE is limited is concerned, but it will not have any adjustment. Direct 55,000 general reserve. ABLE limited balance in PL 62. Share in post acquisition reserves of Baker. Share in post acquisition reserves of Baker is 150. Post acquisition dividend. From Baker, total dividend 7,500, 75% you receive, 6 months out of 15 months is post acquisition. I think this is 2250. Now we have proposed dividend. Proposed dividend of Baker, guys. Uh, Able. Able Limited's proposed dividend is 20%. Their share capital is 1,50,000. This is absolutely wrong. 1,50,000 was prior share capital. But after that, we have a share investments which were taken up in Baker. And for which we have given shares to the extent of 56,250. Now this will become 2,6,250. 1,50,000 already existing in balance sheet. It is without the acquisition entry of investments. So when you have taken up investments, 56,250 share capital increases. So this should be This is one zero one one fifty.
This guy is what? So results for CVS is 23,150. Sufficient to go for the consolidated balance sheet, guys. Complete the balance sheet. So yes guys, let's complete the balance sheet then. Consolidated balance sheet of Able Limited. Start with your equity and liabilities. Under equity and liabilities, shareholder funds. Under shareholder funds, share capital. Share capital is Able Limited, 1,50,000 already existing share capital plus 56,250 total share capital is 2,6,250. Reserves and surplus, guys first take securities premium. On issue of shares, I got a securities premium of 56,250 plus I have a capital reserve. Um, so this is a goodwill on investments, so what else do we have? I have a general reserve and a PL. My general reserve is 55,000. Reserves for CBS, PL we have already solved 23,150. Minority, 20,000. 
no non current liabilities i guess only current liabilities creditors and provision for tax and also proposed dividend creditors provision for tax proposed dividend creditors 27 plus 7 34 provision for tax 33 plus 6 39 dividend we've just written 41 to 50 assets non current assets tangible will fix assets first one is freehold property Two lakhs plus thirty-eight, two thirty-eight. Next one, plant and machinery. Thirty-two plus nine, forty-one. That's it right there. Then uh, intangible. goodwill 20 no how much is the value of goodwill cost of control 54900 other non current assets investments some quoted investments are there investments are 7000 balance all our current assets my current assets are stock data and bank stock 32 plus 21 53 data 41 plus 17 58 Bank fifteen plus eight twenty three. Balance sheet totals to four seventy four nine hundred. 